We've got one more extra piece of content here for the podcast today. Uh, This is a story of innovation and change that is sponsored by Invesco QQQ, the official ETF of the NCAA. And we are talking today about Washington's offensive success with Mike Kuchar, co-founder and senior research manager of XNO Labs. Mike, you, you write great pieces for The Athletic, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad you you put spent the time to put this one together on the Huskies ahead of their game against Oregon. You spent a lot of time studying Washington's uh, passing attack, number one in the country, in pretty much all the metrics you can have for, for passing and scoring an offense. Uh, Mike, how do they do it? What's I guess more and thanks for having me on, gentlemen. I appreciate it. But what's more astonishing is that they're doing it without any presence of a run game. Mm-hmm. So every team that they play, they are they know that they're not going to run the football, and they're still not able to stop it. And you guys know the numbers. The numbers are off the charts. They're staggering. And I think the the point of interest here is that they they've been a lot more efficient than Tennessee was a year ago. Now Tennessee was older age last year, and with their offensive system. But how they do it is simple, quick, air raid concepts. You know, Kalen DeBoer is grounded in the air raid. You know, he's he's everywhere he's been, he's had success. And uh, what I did in the piece is I just highlighted two basic foundational concepts, and they're called horizontal stretches and vertical stretches. And we can be as technical as you guys want. I'm a football coach by trade as well. But <laughs> I just think that their receivers are so good at finding space and exploiting space. The concepts are not as innovative as the way in which those receivers run their routes. So I think we have to give credit to Jamarcus Shepard, their receiver coach who came over from Purdue. He's also the passing game coordinator. But when you turn on the film, gentlemen, it's amazing how open these receivers are using standard concepts in the air raid system. Yeah, I think it was interesting, you know, the the air raid concept, you know, you, you trace that back to how mummy back to Mike Leach, but you don't see a lot of time spent with them. How does this offense and and its concepts and the things that it does relate to the traditional air raid that people think of when they think of that how mummy offense, when they think of Mike Leach and the things that that he infused into the sport? I think the difference is now tight ends are more of a factor in the system. And I think Washington does a great job of utilizing their tight ends. They don't have a lot of catches. You know, we all know about a Dunsey. I don't know if I'm saying his name correctly. We all know about McMillan. We all know about Polk. You know, those are the dudes in that system. But what the way he used the tight ends just to stretch the field and create these horizontal and vertical passing lanes, I think is a difference. Because when you think about the air raid system with, uh, you know, Mummy and Mike Leach, it's all like quick throws, getting the ball out. But um, the downfield shots that they take risks on at Washington are tremendous. And the way in which he's converting them are off the charts. You know, we're, we're just talking about simple. I, I went back and to study the film and I studied all their games this year, simple post concepts, you know, and how they run their post and they break, you know, how they break open to space. And, and, and the one thing I was surprised with defensively is that how many teams play them in single high defense, meaning one high safety. You think mm-hmm. you play an air raid team, you're going to have two safeties at, fi- you know, 15 to 20 yards. I think Tulsa was the only team that played them that way so far this year. You know, Michigan State played them in one high. You know, Boise State played them in one high. I just, I think Oregon will have a different package for them this week. But just how they exploit space is is different in terms of the route, I guess, uh, technique. You know, and from a coach speak, it's like, uh, it's called route tech. And I think it's different than most air raid systems. They're just, they're, just, they're attacking space where they get it. My, when people hear, you know, vertical stretches, obviously they think go balls and certainly uh, Michael Penix, his touch on that ever since he he got to Seattle has been phenomenal. Um, it's been awesome to see him, you know, stay healthy and really take his game. to know. When you talk about horizontal stretches, what does that often look like for Washington in terms of creating that space? It's basically generated on post concepts, corner concepts and what I call cop, which is corner post concepts. And what they're doing, it, they're doing it with their inside receivers more than anybody else. You know, whether McMillan was in there, whether Polk is in there, they find a way to manipulate those two high safety structures. And if they're if they're getting single high, single safety defense, that slot receiver is basically taking his vertical stem to 10 to 12 yards and reading the reaction at high safety. So as he's making his break to the post route, if that high safety closes space on the post, he's turned that into a corner, which is I call a cop. And and Penix knows it. So he's essentially reading the reaction of that high safety. So he's throwing off that. And then what they're doing now is that any two high safety defense, which is interesting to me when they play Tulsa, they will line in trips formations. They'll run a double post concept. And then that third receiver will read the reaction of the nearest high safety. Mm. As high safeties go with the double post concept, 
It's almost becomes what coaches call a sale route or a drop out out. And again, Penix knows that he's reading the reaction to the safety. And one thing I think we have to mention, fellas, is the offensive line has been phenomenal. You know, I think they let up, I think the number is three sacks all year on 178 throwing attempts or something crazy like that. And uh, I, I had a couple coaches tell me that played them this year that they threw everything they could at Penix and the, the harmony in which the offensive line picked it up. And I, I don't know if they're their first round draft picks. I don't know what they're, if they're going to be on any uh, war rooms this year, but I think they, they were so good in picking pressure. And, and, and Michael Penix has the time to deliver those balls, you know, and I think yeah. that's the win. I think his arm talent has been pretty special to be able to make some throws to the field side that a lot of quarterbacks can't make that that give you a lot of freedom um, in in terms of what you want to run in terms of route concepts. So Mike, what, what, you, you, you mentioned that? the you, you mentioned the single high safety on seventy percent of snaps though. Um, as you're watching this, you're watching how how Washington creates space and, and moves well. You, I'm sure as a coach, you're also thinking um, what what are these teams doing in terms of trying to stop this? What do you think that Oregon and these teams ahead are going to try to do to combat this offense? Well, it's funny. I had one coach tell me during my reporting, um, he said that one of the receivers from Washington, they lined up in too high. And one of the receivers turned to their corner and said, damn, UMFers are deep at 15 yards. <laughs> 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 so I, I guess they were not used to seeing that, you know, and, 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 and the coach told me, listen, I told these guys, you are staying at 15 until something takes you out of it because i mean the absence of the run game and everybody i think they're 102nd in the country and running the ball yeah, and one of their opponents knows it so yeah max to answer your question i was shocked as a coach to see how many single high safeties you know they saw this year and i think part of that is that they condensed their formations you know they have a little horizontal jet sweep element but i don't know if it's enough to scare them like what they did to michigan state they just really exploited them and to, to the point about his throwing arm, and, and that's one thing I saw, like those post routes, if it's a single safety, that post route is breaking at the heels, of the toes of the safety, and they will work it all the way across the field where Penix is delivering the ball between the numbers and the sideline. And I don't know how many people could do that, but he is able to do that. Just speaks to his arm talent. So, yeah, I was surprised about the single high stuff. I don't anticipate Oregon. I think I did the numbers. Oregon's a 34% two high safety defense. Uh, I'm sure that that's what they'll align in, you know, this mm-hmm. week. Yeah, I, I was shocked at that. A little shocked. Mm-hmm. At that. I, I know, uh, you know, Kalen and, and Ryan Grubb haven't worked with, with Mike Leach, but I feel like their disdain for the running game. I feel like Mike would be smiling if he was still with us watching that as he's seen <laughs> like Lincoln and Dana do some different things. I feel like he would he would appreciate that. It, it looks like, you know, if they get Jalen McMillan back this week or whenever they do get him, what does that mean for this offense? What does it allow that offense to do? I just think it's another tool to distribute. You know, and I just think the versatility that he has in the slot and out wide and the, their route structures. I mean, uh, Coach Shepard talks about yards after catch. You know, he I think he grades those kids, those players on 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 technique grading yards after catch. So it, he's demanding it. And, and coaches always say, you know, if, if you're not teaching it, you're letting it happen. And mm-hmm. I think that's what mm-hmm. he brings to the table as a coach where he is forcing them to make plays in space. And it's not just about catching the ball. It's about what are you getting after catch? And McMillan has shown that ability to do that in, in every piece of every formation structure that he's been in. So from a defensive standpoint, now you got three tools to work with. And it, it's, you know, they've been doing it too the last couple of weeks. And now they're going to have three that knows the system, knows the foundation, knows how to get open. And, uh, it, it, I can imagine it being a nightmare for Oregon having to worry about him as well. Absolutely. Mike, great piece. Uh, Everyone should check this out on The Athletic uh, this week. Um, Terrific insight into this offense that just really is pretty, pretty unstoppable up to this point. Like you said, when you have the protection, when you've got the the talent, I mean, these guys inherited a great situation. Man, they've made it so much better there in Seattle. Yeah. And And it's clean. And when you watch the film, it's clean. I mean, you can see he's not he he knows where his read is delivering the ball quickly. And uh, he's giving these players room to run in space. So I appreciate you guys having me on. It was a pleasure.